السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عائشہ اظہر اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی چینل او لیبل اسلامیت بائی عائشہ اظہر کنٹینگ ود آر آ حدیث ان دس لیکچر ویل ایکسپلین اینڈ آئی ایل ایکسپلین حدیث نمبر سکسٹین ٹیل ٹوینٹی آئی ہوپ آفٹر دس سیشن یو ول بی ایبل ٹو اٹیمپ کوشچن نمبر ون اکارڈنگ ٹو دا سی آئی پیٹرن اینڈ یو ول بی ایبل ٹو اچیو اے گڈ مارکس آل رائٹ اسٹارٹنگ فرام حدیث نمبر سکسٹین دا بلیورس are like a single man if his eye is affected he is all affected and if his head is affected he is all affected now this hadith clearly states that this hadith is our rights and responsibility towards our community and this hadith is a communal hadith ab if you want to know that what does a communal hadith means and what does individual hadith means then you have to watch my previous lectures i'll be sharing the links and uh, you can uh, uh, watch that hadith part in which i clearly explains the difference between uh, you know individual hadith and communal hadith so this is a communal hadith this hadith teaches us to develop fraternity and brotherhood among the Mus- among our muslims and among the believers we learn that muslims ummah is anal- analogous to a human body this means similar to human body if any part of the human body feels pain the entire body feels pain similarly when a muslim fa- falls into disaster the entire muslim ummah must come to his aid and rescue muslim brotherhood is a fundamental feature of islamic social society you know that when prophet sa migrated to medina the first thing which he did after the construction of mosque he pair up muslims and established uh, you know muwakhat between ansars and muhajirin so allah has established this bond of brotherhood in the believers as prophet sa himself said that the muslim society is like a body in respect of mutual love and sympathy if a limb in the body suffer pains the whole body responds to it by sleeplessness and fever okay so this uh, hadith clearly explains our uh, rights and responsibility of an individual towards the community whereas the action says how we can put this these teachings into an action first we'll write with the general statement uh, we'll start with the general statement that muslims today should understand the importance of unity and brotherhood brotherhood is a single word so when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam established brotherhood the ansars preferred their muhajirin brothers over themselves muslims today should follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam example as he himself said all muslims are like the limb of a man if one eye, if the eye hurts the whole body feels the pain and in the same way if anyone has a headache the whole body body joins in suffering so what should muslims do muslims should be ready to give preference to the need of their fellow muslims when people of one country are in disaster they are oppressed their pain is felt by other as well as uh, it was such as thing was happened in palestine and uh, or happening in palestine and kashmir and iraq we should help them as much as we can and similarly devastating earthquakes hit northern pakistan and it, the, i'm just actually talking about 2005 you can write over here 2005 so there was an out, out pouring of aid from all the muslim countries brother countries and muslims as well so when this uh, this hadith clearly explains that one should be helpful towards our muslims or b- towards the fellow muslims even if they are in need over here i have written one more thing that helping fellow muslims in times of hardships like financial loss illness or death of a family member so over here this is our daily life example you know every time we are not facing uh, full floods we are not facing earthquakes and everyone is not being persecuted because of the religion this example which i have highlight is actually or selected is basically our daily life problem which we used to face it could be a financial loss business loss it could be a health issue a mental distress or a death of a family member it, at this time muslims fellows help their fellow muslims monetary emotionally or physically so this should be written in your explanation all right coming towards hadith number 17 hadith number 17 explains that modesty produce nothing but good now modesty what is the meaning of modesty Ma- uh, many of the students used to say whenever i ask that uh, what is the meaning of modest- modesty some students say it's simplicity some say it's humil- it's humility so basically modesty means it's ba- basically when we use modesty we use it as you know uh, uh, hu- for humility we use for simplicity we use but actual meaning of modesty uh, the modest word is taken from moderate that is uh, that is a middle way modesty in your behavior 
modesty in your spending money modesty in your living style so that's why when we use modesty as a simplicity it is fine but basic modesty the literal meaning modesty is a moderate way you when you adopt modesty in your life it is basically modesty in your behavior in your clothing in your you know uh, in your spending money so there are so many things in which you are supposed to show modesty so this hadith is clearly an individual hadith because who will supposed to show modesty you an individual and it will good give benefit to you all right so this hadith teaches us that modesty is a source of seeking allah's blessing this hadith clearly explains the importance of modesty and how it is a principle that creates and foster a moral pious and respectful society modesty is the excellence of behavior which prevents a feeling of disgust at anything which is displeasing to allah which means that when you uh, adopt modesty uh, you will not be extravagant you will not spend too much because all these things cause uh, displeasure of allah and most importantly it could develop envy and jealousy among the muslims it also tells us that modesty protect us from protects us from evil and from all the acts of indecencies and immorality immorality immoral acts so as prophet sallallahu said modesty is from faith and faith is in paradise and indecency is from evil and evil is in fire that is hell now how we can implement modesty in our life so this hadith uh, throws light on the sublime courtesy and unique humility of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as his desire to meet the wants of the needy he was modest in his dealing with all kinds of people whether young or old rich or poor men women and not only won their hearts with his courteous demeanor but also gained allah's pleasure and sets an example for his followers he declared modesty as a cardinal feature of islam as he himself said every religion has a distinctive quality and distinctive quality of islam is modesty muslims should be modest not only towards allah but also towards their fellow muslims both men and women should practice modesty towards each other in their clothing words and actions they should behave properly and should not cause discomfort as i told you earlier that modesty is not only simplicity you know modesty could be anything when you are practicing modesty it could be through your clothing through your behavior in your voice so it could be while spending money it could be anything so it's a middle way a moderate way when you are uh, you know living your life in a balanced way not too much not too low that is modesty so modesty should also be practiced towards friends at school or work by being helpful and respectful towards each other by respecting the difference of opinion over here i have spent a uh, written that while spending money even that one should not spend too much that uh, he is wasting his money it's better to donate to someone and one should not be too much miser that he is not spending and you know spending uh, money and uh, he is you know uh, i could say ungrateful to allah's blessing because if allah has given us so much he should spend it he should donate even give donation to the less privileged or you know uh, the down trodden as well hadith number 18 states that he who has in his heart as much faith as a grain of mustard seed, seed will not enter hell and he who has in his heart as much pride as a grain of mustard seed will not enter paradise what do you think is it individual or communal definitely this is individual because this is giving benefit to you only it uh, if you are rejecting pride arrogance boastfulness and you are having true faith it will give benefits to you so it is beneficial for you only for individual so this is individual hadith so this hadith the main teaching of hadith are that it conveys a positive message that a man who even um, have a mustard seed of worth of faith will be rewarded with heaven a mustard seed is very tiny but allah is so merciful that even this insignificant amount of faith will be rewarded but even an iota of pride will bar a person from entering paradise now what does iota means iota means a little bit of pride will bar him from entering paradise now what actually this these means that a true faith and again um, a mustard uh, grain of seed of uh, arrogance this means that a true believer will not be arrogant in his life why because a true believer 
will realize that because man is arrogant because of what because of his achievements because of his beauty because of his you know financial status these are the things now because of which we are arrogant or we'll be uh, we'll show arrogance so the thing is the true believer will realize that if i'm beautiful if i'm financially strong uh, if i'm you know uh, one of the high achievers that is because of allah's blessing it is a blessing on him and he'll be thankful to him he'll show gratitude towards allah towards all the blessings rather than being boastful this is the point this is the crux of this that a true believer will not be arrogant in his life because he'll be uh, thankful to him because to allah because of his achievements all right and his blessings so we come to know that true faith develops a sense of humility and makes us submissive to allah's command it also warns us against pride and arrogance as the trait of unrighteous uh, and are rejected one deeds you can write over here uh, one of the signs of iblis iblis was also arrogant you know he rejected allah's he disobeyed allah's order because he thought that he superior uh, from others so that's why uh, this hadith says that the one who will show arrogance will not enter in the paradise so it brings allah's displeasure and deprives us from his blessings now how we can put practice or this these teachings into practice and how we can put uh, you know implement the teachings these teachings in our life muslims should have faith in allah and obey his command as it can bring for them the reward of paradise most importantly humility is a quality which is liked by allah and we have the best example in the messenger of allah and other prophets too so to treat each other treat each other humbly leniently lovingly is understood as humility anyone whom allah has granted wealth or authority beauty or splendor should take it as allah's gift rather than being boastful you know as i told you earlier so prophet sasan was very humble when he entered paradise uh, sorry i am really so it's not like that so prophet sawale wasallam prophet sawale wasallam prophet sawale wasallam was very humble when he entered makka at the time of its conquest his head was bowed down and he was glorifying allah why he was uh, showing this attitude because he know that he was exiled from the same city and now he is conquering this land so he did not want to show any sign of arrogance because this will cause allah's displeasure so on other another occasion he said verily allah has revealed to me that you should adopt humility and no one should be taught haughty Uh, should be haughty towards another following prophet's am example muslims today should not feel proud on their achievements uh, rather than they should be humble and show gratitude towards allah's blessings they should reject all notions of arrogance and live their life as humble servant of allah now hadith number 19 hadith number 19 is clearly about the role of an individual why because it states that the the world is the believers prison and the unbelievers paradise because it gives benefit to an individual uh, an individual will feel him as he is in a prison if he is a true believer and an unbeliever he will feel that whatever the thing is this world is everything for him and he'll do whatever he feels is right all right so that's why this is an individual hadith so the main teaching of this hadith is that it tells us the proper way of living our lives in this world as a true believer or as a mu'min it tells us that a believer in this world is like a prisoner he does not consider this world as his home he and his example is that of a prisoner you know a prisoner feels uh, you know uh, uncomfortable he feel restricted because uh, he is in prison in a room or something like that so same is the case with the true believer he has to offer five times a day prayer he feels restricted he will uh, try not to speak lie he will try not to do backbiting he will try not to hurt anyone he will not be arrogant he will be humble so every time he feels that he is restricted because he know that eventually he is answerable to allah and uh, he'll be accountable to him on the day of judgment and and uh, uh, he remember every time he remembers uh, life after death so that's why he feels restricted so as far as the unbeliever is concerned he feels that whatever i want to do i will do either i i'll earn money through illegal mean or legal mean the thing is this world is everything for me so uh, i don't know whatever will happen after the death it is not important for me this life where i am living over here is more important and i live according to my own will 
not according to the will of Allah. So we come to know that all worldly possessions are temporary and the world, uh, worldly life is time of test and trial for a believer because he always remembers the hereafter. As Prophet himself said that the world is a believer prison and famine but when the le he leaves the world he leaves the prison and the famine. Okay, it further tells us that not to be materialistic, self-centered because these are the signs of a true, are the signs of not a true believer but the unbelievers and who do not believe in this life, uh, I mean hereafter. Alright, I hope this is clear that this hadith explains about the life of a true believer that he feels uh, restricted, he feels imprisoned and as far as the unbeliever is concerned he feels that whatever it is this world is everything for him okay how we can put these teachings in our action most prophets always teaches muslims to stay away from all those acts which were forbidden in islam as azat aisha said his moral of the quran that the quran is his character which shows that he always uh, you know restricted himself from all unevil acts you know he was in mecca he was surrounded by the people who were involved in social evils like drinking gambling adultery and he uh, always uh, uh, you know uh, uh, remain isolated he never indulge himself in such activities all right so muslims should focus on cons concentrating to spend our lives in this prison that is world as per rules and regulations set by allah and shun our desires and wishes in this world to project ourselves before allah as a true muslims so how Muslims can implement the teachings by performing religious obligations like Salat, Psalm, Zakat, etc. and social duties that is to be helpful towards our fellow Muslims. So Muslims uh, should think that acquisition of wealth and worldly possessions should not be the main aim of their lives. Rather, they should strive, they should strive for the eternal rewards of the hereafter. So Prophets are reported to have said, be in this world as you are a stranger or wayfarer. Hadith number 20. Hadith number 20 explains that God does not look at our, your forms and your possessions but he look at your hearts and your deeds. What is this Hadith? Is it individual or communal? Definitely it is individual because Allah is looking into our hearts not other hearts. So it's individual Hadith. It's our intentions. If our intentions are good Allah will give us reward. If are doing, we are doing something with bad intentions, definitely He knows everything. Nothing is, you know, uh, hidden from Him. So we will not be rewarded. So this hadith is very important as it is, uh, it is the basic guideline for all our actions. Allah does not judge us by appearance, beauty, wealth, possessions, or status. He look at our hearts, that is intentions and actions, which must be sincere. As Prophet himself said that the action shall be judged by the intentions it makes us clear that however good and noble an act may be apparently so apparently it is worthless in the sight of allah if the heart is lacking in earnestness and aim is not solely for the pleasure of allah if you are doing something to please others to show others allah will not you know uh, be uh, you know uh, it is not pleasing for allah and he will not give us reward for that and Allah is not in need of anything, worldly possessions, power, wealth or high social status and will never uh, these things will never impress Allah. How we can implement these teachings? First of all, we must remember that no virtue will be accepted by Allah without ikhlas, that is sincerity, no matter how great it may be. Our action must be correct strictly according to the Islamic teaching even if they seems alien to some society because our intention is to please Allah, we should not worry about it. We understand that people around us may not only appreciate our parents and wealth but the only one whose appreciation is worth getting is Allah. So Prophet Sassam declared Hazrat Bilal as the first Muslim of Islam without considering his physical appearance. You know Hazrat Bilal was an Abyssinian slave and a Ethiopian slave, a black slave but though he was because of his piousness, his piety, he was appointed as the first Muslim of Islam. Muslims should realize that the Allah knows everything and we should uh, try to seek the pleasure of Allah by doing good and avoiding evil. Okay, so piety should be the only criteria of superiority. One should understand that Islam in Islam, the only criteria of excellence near Allah is our piety, not our physical appearance nor our financial status. 
so if a mus poor muslim spends small amount of for the charity and help the other poor muslim that amount will be considered as the greatest of all just because of his intention of helping his brother in the time of difficulty once pro, uh, when a poor companion distributed uh, this is an you know example again the uh, companion distributed his entire daily earning in his charity the prophet sam declared that those few dates were worth mountains of gold due to emotions behind it you know this was his intention and allah knows the intention so islam condemns pretensions and therefore prophet sam said the one who performs salat with the intention of showing it to other has committed a shirk because when you are showing to other pretensions means to show someone uh, for showing you are pretending to be someone which you are not so it is taken from the word pretend so when you are showing doing pretensions you are uh, islam condemn all these things so students i hope all 20 ah hadith were are understood by you people i'll be uploading more videos in future inshallah taala lazis if you are finding any problem any uh, you have any query regarding any other topic you can write it on the comment section i'll reply you i'll upload according to your you know needs and demands so keep watching my channel don't forget to like subscribe and to press bell icon button so you will be notified whenever i upload a new video take care of yourself fi manilla allah hafiz